Hi everybody, welcome back. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. So I made it back from camping in one piece. As you guys know that have followed me for years, I love doing this with my husband. It is so relaxing. You're just reading books, occasionally listening to music. We stayed somewhere called the Earth Camp in North Chaley. And to be honest with you, we didn't even have music on a lot of the time because it was so surrounded by thick, dense nature. You just listen to the birds. It was honestly one of the best camping trips we had. They have hot showers and very clean compost toilets, which is a must when you camp. Two injuries. First up was on the first night, I decided to drink tequila, so I was cutting the limes. Silly me decided to leave the knife that I was cutting the limes on, on the board, on the floor. So I got out of bed the following morning, kicked it, a brand new knife with my big toe. I'm not gonna show you photographs, take my word for it, but my big toe now smiles. There was blood everywhere. The second injury of the day done mere hours apart had my husband <laughs> shaking his head. He went to the supermarket because we'd forgot to bring our cooking pans. So whilst he was out, I decided to light the fire to make myself a cup of tea. And we'd had a gas leak the night before, forgotten about it as I lit it kind of ricocheted round, fireball, probably double the size of a football, shot up in the air, missed my face, but my arm went up. Um, so then I just stank of burnt arm hair. <laughs> it was pretty gross, but luckily no major injuries. But I rang my husband, I was like, I just set myself on fire. And he's just like, I've been out the campsite three minutes, three minutes. So yes, but that's typical. As I said, I always come back with a good camping story. Now, speaking of stories, let's get on to what has been coming out in the news. The Daily Mail has released a story saying that Catherine has in fact been out and about spending more time with friends and family. This, I think, has been confirmed by the palace because they've added in that she still will not be returning to duties anytime soon. She's taking it easy. She still wants her privacy. So she's not obviously going to be making appearances to appease some people in the papers but it's wonderful to hear that she is up and about and obviously slowly feeling a little bit better most of you that have spoken to me and obviously people that I know that have experienced it chemo can really wipe the floor with you so it's really good to hear news like this about Catherine and I am one of the people whilst I'm obviously concerned for her welfare I don't need to see photographs to prove it now, in another lovely story, father and son had a fantastic day out. They went to the FA Cup final, where you can see they were having a right giggle, laughing and joking. Prince George looks, he does look so much like his father, but also like Michael Middleton. But you can really see that it was a really good bonding time for both of them. Prince George's face was ecstatic at the end when he got to shake famous footballer Jack Grealish's hand. But it must be a wonderful experience to be at such a big cup final. I'm not a football fan, but my husband told me it was a pretty big deal. <laughs> Now, speaking of big deals, let's talk about someone who brags that they are a big deal that's, well, other than Meghan. And that is their now preferred favourite photographer, Miss Anne Harriman, who decided to do a post announcing to the world that I am humbled and proud to announce that my portrait of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex is now part of the permanent collection in the National Portrait Gallery. This photograph was taken at the One Young World Summit, where Meghan decided she shortly after this photograph to go out and give an inspiring speech to all of the new young leaders that were there gathered for this big convention and mentioned herself 54 times in seven minutes. Now, of course, because Harry and Meghan like to toot their own trumpet and their version of the truth doesn't necessarily mean it is the truth, People have obviously looked into Miss Anne's words and they contacted the National Portrait Gallery and they have responded with a slightly different response. There are currently no immediate plans to display the work and as it has just been delivered, it will need to go through our cataloguing process before it's available. But that to me sounds like they said, <laughs> whoa, whoa, your horse is down. Uh, we're not sure if we're actually going to have this displayed at all at this point because we've only just received it. I can definitely also see why he's friends with Meghan because I'm seeing a lot of stories where he seems to find racism everywhere he looks. He's always complaining about microaggressions. He has got links to some interesting people as well. This person that you should all recognise, oh, the race baiter Ngozi Fulani, who I still believe was set up by Meghan's 
friends to go in there and cause problems for Queen Camilla, but it was in fact Lady Susan Hussey who got it in the neck instead. It's funny how these people all seem to be linked one way or another. Now, speaking of Meghan, this story has come out. I got tagged in this by Molly's mama, who is a Twitter user or X as it's now called. She tagged me in this storyline saying she's basically worked out where she heard Megan's 43% Nigerian genealogy before, because it was very specific. Not 40%, not 45%, but the fact that Megan was 43% Nigerian. Well, she's managed to track it back to Georgina Lawton. Now, Georgina Lawton released her book in 2020, and it's all to do with her racial identity. She was brought up, both her parents were white, and obviously, as you can imagine, there was some confusion, but her mother insistently told her that she is their daughter. It later turned out, after she decided to do her very own DNA test, that she was 43% Nigerian, because her mother at some point had had an affair with a Nigerian man. But isn't it funny that this story came about at the time that Meghan decided to stir up a lot of racial tensions, race baiting about how she was only ever treated as a black woman since she came to the UK. We know Meghan made a lot of references to being treated differently because of her racial identity in the UK by the royal family. And of course, she repeated this, as did her mother, on Netflix. And Megan also happens to be exactly 43% Nigerian. But the difference is this is Georgina's biological father, whereas Megan, her relations from Nigeria are so distant that people can't even track it back on her family tree. But in saying that, Megan, when she went to Nigeria, it's been noted that she made no attempt to further try and research any family history. She didn't have names of anybody. She wasn't really interested in looking more into perhaps which demographic, which tribe that she originates from. Obviously, as I've told you before, Nigeria, fairly new country, um, officially legally formed. I think it was 1914, gained independence in 1960. But it is made up with over 370. 70 different tribes that make the various different ethnic groups. But Megan showed no interest in it whatsoever, other than obviously having dinners and parties held in her honour, getting presents, freebies, and of course her very own naming ceremony. It makes me think, like I've always said, that I'm not quite sure Megan is 43% Nigerian, and I think that she has used a country to get coverage. And of course, to tell the next generation of Nigerian girls that finally, finally, now, in her, they have a role model. A familiar face for the next generation to say, oh, she looks like me, and I can be that. And as it turns out, it's quite a few people that weren't quite happy with Meghan's conduct and behaviour whilst in Nigeria including the First Lady of Nigeria. Senator Uluremi Tinubu was less than impressed with Meghan's attire on this brief trip to Nigeria. And I've spoken about it quite a lot in the videos because it was shocking. And with half of the population reportedly being Muslim, it wasn't hardly surprising that people were not particularly happy. It's offensive. It's about showing respect for other people's cultures and customs when you go on holiday. Whenever I go on holiday with my husband, I make sure that I research the places that we're going to, making sure I've got everything if I need to cover my shoulders, if we're going into any sort of religious places to make sure I've got a headscarf. It's about showing common decency and more importantly, showing respect to the country that you're visiting. We saw the lady at the school who Megan turned her back on, she was showing her shoulders. So it's obviously not very strict, but that is very different to what Megan exposed on her body. It wasn't just a glimpse of shoulder. She was slit from her neck down to her navel in one dress. She actually flashed her breasts and her nipples when she was walking into this particular event. Her dresses were held together by two simple strips of material. She bared her back, she bared her stomach, she showed a lot of cleavage, as I've shared the photographs as well. People didn't know where to look. Megan, any, well, I say Megan, any normal person, if I'd gone on holiday and I'd worn a beach dress and then realised, actually, you know, the women are a lot more covered up around here, I'm getting lots of stares from children, from the men, and of course the women as well. I should cover up. But Megan didn't. The 
The only time she did eventually cover up was when she wore that beautiful blue skirt with that white shirt and then that yellow Carolina Herrera gown. For the rest of that holiday, and even after we thought finally she's actually covering herself up a bit more, she wore this to the polo match. It's all of her back, it's all the way, her stomach, her chest. It's honestly, I mean, considering this woman is supposed to be highly educated and intelligent, and she did international relations or whatever it was supposed to be when she was at Northwestern, she shows absolutely no respect to the cultures and the countries that she's visiting. Obviously, we know she's rude about the customs that we had with our queen, but also when she went to South Africa with Harry when they went to a mosque, Meghan did not cover her hair. Meghan also left her shirt undone to her chest. But again, this is just understanding basic respect for the places that you visit. But Harry has been trained for this since birth. He knew what his wife was wearing was disrespectful and it was causing offence. And now, of course, we've had the first lady who has spoken out and has said, your nakedness is not welcome in Nigeria. And she did, in fact, mention Meghan's name. The moment you can see what they showcase on the stage, I said, we are fashionable. We see what is going on. You know, we are not having a Met Gala and everyone their nakedness is just everywhere and the men are well clothed so we have to do something tell them the way it is we don't accept nakedness in our culture they, that that is not beautiful it's not beautiful at all and they are all beautiful girls but they should be confident to know they are they don't want to be like even they are mimicking and trying to uh, emulate film stars from America. They don't know where they come from. Why did uh, Megan come here looking for Africa? That is something we have to take home with. We know who we are and don't lose who you are. God bless you. I don't think that she was rude at all. She was just clearly stating facts. Even in the UK, Canada, Australia, when we have film premieres and all of these big galas that women go to, a lot of people are sick of women wearing nothing but see-through clothes. We've seen it all. We don't need to see it, let alone in conservative countries. As the First Lady said, this is not the Met Gala. It's not acceptable. It's not acceptable to go to schools and to tell their children as well, I see so much of myself in you. And I'm sorry, that to me is a really arrogant statement. First of all, these are young black women growing up in Nigeria. Meghan has predominantly pretended that she is white her entire life. She has never claimed any of her black heritage before until she joined the royal family and she realised that she could weaponise it. She did a genealogy test all those years ago, apparently found out that she was Maltese. So the fact that she's waited now until she's nearly in her mid-40s, she's found out she's Nigerian, I'm sorry, it just doesn't wash with me. But it was the fact that when Meghan went to that big women's event and she sat there with a microphone and I am definitely now the role model for the next generation of young Nigerian girls. If you listen to her speech in full, this is what it comes down to. She is basically saying that now they can look up and they can see someone like me. And I'm sorry, Meghan is not someone that I think many parents would strive for their daughters to grow up to be. Meghan's successes solely rely on the health of men she used her father she married a film producer and he still couldn't make her break happen in Hollywood she wasn't a Hollywood actress Megan has obviously she's got the confidence wow she really does she is incredibly tenacious but she was basically a showgirl on deal or no deal and then she had a few bits and then her only real success was suits and that's only because suits was a success and ironically it's more of a sex success now than it was then nobody had heard of her. She married a prince. That is it. That is all that Meghan has got to bring to the table. She married Prince Harry, the second son to the now current king of the UK. But to turn around and say that I'm now an inspiration to all of these girls when she's practically half-dressed. 
And her only claim to real fame is the fact that she married someone and tried to destroy his family publicly. No wonder the First Lady decided that she was actually going to say something. Now, with Meghan talking about that they're now hopefully going to go over and take up Ghana's invite, I think that they've got a pretty formidable First Lady. And it would be really interesting to see if Meghan is going to learn any lessons whatsoever from choosing to cover herself more respectfully or whether we might be also getting a mention from the First Lady of Ghana at a later date. Meghan and our UK media can keep gaslighting us and telling us what a success this tour was, but it's quite clearly obvious it was not a success. It's heat embarrassment on them. People have been really angry and obviously saying that the king must act now because they are going to damage the royal family. They're damaging the relations with the UK. Bear in mind they'd already upset Canadians by basically using their taxpayers' cash and then when they found out that Canada was not willing to pay for them, they were like, didn't even say thank you for the money that you've spent. They were off again. In Australia, they were rude on tours. They were rude in Fiji. Meghan stormed out of that market because she was up upset, according to Tom Bauer's book Revenge, that UN women were there. They upset people in South Africa, not just whilst they were there, but when they came back, because they turned around and said that the housing unit that they were forced to stay in practically caught fire and her son could have lost his life. Offensive to all of the staff that I'm sure were waiting on her hand and foot and the fact that that house is not a housing unit. But of course, even when she came back, she said that when she went to the Lion King premiere, a South African cast member said that people were rejoicing in the streets when she married Harry, just like they did when Nelson Mandela was released from prison. Obviously, Nelson Mandela's family members have spoken out about how distasteful this was, as did the Lion King staff that said, yeah, we've only got one member of staff that really spoke to her from South Africa. And uh, no, that did not happen. It was a bit like on this tour, Megan, one of the cheesiest things that she'd said, and I forgot to put it in the previous video, is when she sat down and she spoke about Lily. And she turned around and said that when Lily was walking over to her one day, she looked into her eyes and said, Mama, I see me in you. And I hung on to those words, she said. Wow, she is not even three years old yet and she apparently sees herself in her mother's eyes. It's the same theme that Megan had throughout this Nigerian trip, telling those young girls that she sees herself in them and the fact that she is brave, resilient, powerful, and she is now the role model for future generations. If Meghan was chocolate, she would truly, truly, I think she would eat herself. Nobody loves Meghan like Meghan loves Meghan. And as I said, for all the people getting stressed, saying they need to strip the titles, all that will do will be playing into their victim narrative where they can say, oh, they did it for racism. They did it because they were scared of our successful tour in Nigeria. I think the royal family have handled it perfectly. They're not speaking with them. They're not seeing them. They're not giving them any material. And Harry and Meghan, the more that they go on these tours, the more that they expose themselves, the more ridicule that they get just through their own behaviour. I honestly say, carry on Duchess, keep on going. So guys, that's it for me on this video. I will be back with you very soon. Take care for now. See you soon. Bye.